those that don't know what CHEP does, please could you maybe just explain to us what the company CHEP does? Yeah, thanks, Mbali. I can make it quite a long, but I'll keep it short. Um, CHEP is a global supply chain logistics company. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Nwoko and thank you so much for joining us on today's episode 119, 119th episode of the Farming Podcast, uh, soon approaching 120 and hopefully uh, in a few months we would be approaching episode 200. Uh, so it's been quite an incredible journey speaking to all the guests onto the show and having you at home ask questions around various topics that we've been um, having each week for the past couple of months. Today we're going to be speaking around trends in agriculture, um, sustainability, technology, artificial intelligence, and we have Gerard Stander, who is the director of CHEP, that's going to be uh, in conversation with us this evening. So if you have any questions around trends in agriculture, any terminologies or methodologies that you're not quite sure of, um, and that maybe you want to hear us talking about this evening, please feel free to comment on the um, uh, chat or comment section, wherever you may be watching us, whether it's Facebook, Instagram Live, or YouTube live and we'll be happy to uh, respond to some of your questions um, but um, yeah I think also continue to like share and comment in uh, each of our podcast episodes and if there's any topics that you would like us to um, explore and um, con have a conversation around on the podcast f please feel free to do so and send us a direct message on our inst uh, on our, our social media channels whether it's Instagram Facebook or or YouTube. So let's get straight into it and also not forgetting Twitter. Um, so let's get it straight into it and introduce our guest for this evening. His name is Gerard Stander from uh, uh, CHEP and he's the director at CHEP. Gerard, thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing? Hi there, Mbali. No, thanks. And thanks for having me today. Um, doing well, thanks. Awesome. I was just saying the, uh, off air that, you know, I know CHIP in a different light uh, where, you know, as a farmer, I use CHIP products. Um, so this evening, our topic is around trends in agriculture. But for those that don't know what CHIP does, please, could you maybe just explain to us what the company CHIP does? Yeah, thanks, Mbali. I can make it quite a long, but I'll keep it short. Um, CHIP is a global supply chain logistics company. And in short, we're actually supplying a lot of uh, supply chain logistics platforms to our customer base, mainly pallets. Pallets is our uh, big product out there. And then there's also in the agriculture industry, uh, small crates, and then also what we call bulk bins. We've been in South Africa for um, almost 40 years, and uh, we actually operate in a few um, countries um, in sub-Saharan Africa. Awesome. So now moving straight into our topic this evening, um, you know, technology is a, 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 a huge player in the agricultural space. And obviously, uh, agriculture or farming uh, is uh, quite an age old industry. Um, and as the years have progressed, we've obviously had to adapt, whereas uh, whether we're farmers or uh, industry stakeholders like CHEP. So how has, um, based on your view, how has um, artificial intelligence, machine learning and technology shaped the way we see agriculture today? Yeah, thanks Mbali. In the farming and agriculture sector, artificial intelligence technology allows businesses to automate a variety of processes, free up employees' time, and help, help improve um, productivity. Mm. AI can help farmers locate irrigation leaks, can't believe it actually, but optimize irrigation systems okay. and measure the effectiveness of crop irrigation approaches. AI systems are helping to improve the overall harvest quality and also accuracy. In pre-harvesting, um, machine learning 
is, is used to capture the parameters of soil, seed quality, pruning, genetic and environmental conditions, and irrigation. Focusing on each component, it's important to minimize the overall losses in production as well. The agriculture industry is generating more data than ever mm. at the moment on everything from the weather to logistics to market price uh, volatility. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true because with data, that's where we make the insights, right? And, you know, there's also another term called digital twinning. Um, how, how does this allow producers create value within the agri-sector? Yeah, a, a digital twin is a digital representation of a physical object, process or service. I know it sounds rather complicated. <laughs> But uh, digital twining allows producers to create value by applying digital and analytical technologies to new business models and product offerings before launching them in the physical world. Using the data that they capture, agriculture players can build digital twins of their physical supply chains, virtual replicas that allow them to run simulations and find the most efficient ways of moving crops through the system. Yeah. Digital, digital twining can also process this data to determine the most effective stra strategy for procurement, production, inventory, transportation, and, and as well as uh, point, for, point of sales. Businesses can model functions to optimize their operations and their profits. Right. Logistics, yeah, logistics organizations such as ours are supporting this industry evolution through sophistication. Uh, sophisticated track and trace technology that also generates data and can further optimize uh, supply chains for both uh, efficiency as well as for sustainability. Yeah, you know, Gerard, um, I can't think of a competitor in this space uh, that is really competing with CHIP. And I'm thinking, uh, as, you explain, as you're explaining this digital twinning model, uh, my follow-up question was to say, does CHIP currently make use of this model or this practice? Um, and how do you keep abreast of the various products that you're selling to the market, you know, because a lot of farmers consume your product, a lot of uh, processors and retailers consume your product. How do you keep track of where your product goes um, across uh, the the uh, across all the different provinces? Yes, I mean, uh, as I mentioned before, we're part of a global company, so we we try and make sure that we keep abreast of what's happening across the globe. So um, we, we, we are in the process at the moment to, to actually um, trial this through different projects, through, through our customer base, to make sure that we keep abreast and make sure that where our assets are. In the agriculture space, we, we're actually busy with a very exciting uh, track and trace um, uh, model to make sure, um, especially within certain provinces, because mostly uh, in the agriculture industry, our asset stays within the different areas, mm. mostly in, in the north as well as in the um, the south, in the Western Cape and the mm. Eastern Cape. So, uh, so for us, it's very exciting at the moment that the whole uh, space. Yeah. yeah, you mentioned that you're a global company. Um, you know, obviously, various sites across the world, and um, having been in South Africa for quite some time as well, um, and also just being dominating in the space. What's what's Chip's secret to um, you know staying abreast of the su supply chain and being a sustainable business year in year out? Yeah, with organizations and uh, individuals across the planet looking to embrace sustainable, sustainability wherever they can, it has now become really almost non, not negotiable that supply chains be built on sustainable uh, principles. At CHIP, we have been sustainably providing mm. platforms for agriculture supply chains for decades throughout our share and reuse system of pallets, crates, and bin pooling. The next frontier for sustainability is to build regeneration uh, back more into the environment that we take out. In our business, we are making progress to achieve this vision through initiatives such as our vertical integration strategy, whereby we plant two trees for every tree we use in the manufacture and repair of our pallets. We are actually very proud of that. Okay. The goal is to, to restore, replenish, and to create more value for society. 
and the environment, uh, then the business takes out. This vision is articulated in our 2025 uh, sustainability targets. Yeah, um, Gerard, you know, your product is mostly consumed in the fresh produce space, right? Um, let's say horticulture. From your experience, how have your customers, right, the, 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 the customers, the people that you deal with within the fresh produce space, how have they adapted to new consumer trends and requirements given the speed and rate in which we have to consume technology, adapt our businesses towards technology, and uh, be in this e-commerce uh, space? So how has the fresh produce industry, um, from your experience, kept abreast of all the consumer trends and demands um, and also infusing e-commerce uh, into their operations as well? Yeah, very good question. Um, in the, I mean, in the agriculture sector, fresh produce logistics required speed, like you've mentioned, yeah. by reliability and availability of platforms that meet the specific needs um, of the product. Yes. We provide solutions based on our customers' needs. One such is the need to have visibility of their produce from farm to fork. Chips track and trace solution allows for this, uh, whereby our customers are able to carefully monitor their products from the time it leaves uh, the orchards to the packhouse until they get into the fresh produce uh, supply chain. Yeah. Yeah, and Chips model uh, also, obviously, it's, it's two ways, right? Uh, your customers can own your product or rent the product. Um, where have you seen the demand uh, from a Chips perspective? Yeah, sorry, uh, Mali, I just need to mention that we, we actually renting out uh, uh, all our products, so, so they never own it. Uh, it's always the property of Chip, yeah. Oh, okay, because I think I've seen some bins that uh, can be sold, but basically, like, okay, so basically on, on the rental aspect, uh, why was the rental option much better as opposed to yes. ownership? Yes, yeah. Increasingly, producers are coming to accept that platforms logistics is a a really a specialist uh, competence. Mm and that there are real efficiencies and sustainability benefits to be gained from, from engaging organizations with the right equipment for their needs mm. and the business model to manage it efficiently. A rental pallet and container pooling model, for instance, offers lower, more transparent costs than uh, having to purchase pallets or containers. Chip, uh, chips uh, share and reuse model, like I've mentioned, means that uh, pallets and containers are rented to customers and are returned to our service centers across the country to be washed and reconditioned and they are to put out into the supply chain again to be reused. Mm. The trend is increasing uh, for growers, farmers and uh, agri-processors alike mm. to engage with specialist platforms, suppliers for their logistics needs so mm. that they can focus on their own area of expertise producing the fruit uh, that really feeds the world. Uh, feed the world yeah. yeah, it seems like, uh, you know, you've perfected this model around logistics and supply chain. And especially, mm -hmm. you know, being in fresh produce, we do, we do deal with delicate uh, products, um, yeah. you know, um, short um, uh, shelf lifespan, uh, you know, uh, for example, I can also think of products like strawberries, for example, that are quite delicate, blueberries, you know, how does CHIP ensure that yeah. throughout the logistics and transportation or su supply uh, chain process, how does CHIP ensure that with your product, you know, um, how do you give that 100% guarantee to customers to ensure that by using CHIP, you know, the delicate produce or the delicate fresh produce could still be intact, um, especially transporting goods across across various provinces, etc. Yeah, absolutely. Being a farmer yourself, you will um, realize <laughs> that the important this is. Increasingly, yeah. resourceful uh, logistics firms are producing platforms that can accommodate and protect uh, delicate produce. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned blueberries, uh, strawberries. I can add apples, bananas, peaches, for example, yes. uh, which require reusable uh, plastic uh, containers. We call them RPCs that are robust, but also flexible, lightweight, and well-ventilated, which is so important. For the highest produce grades, sensors may also be installed to measure and report on the temperature, humidity, and integrity of the produce throughout uh, the journey from farm to fork. 
at CHEP, we really pride ourselves on being able to cater to these kinds of uh, requirements for our agriculture customers. Uh, we do this by offering the unique requirements of each produce category, or which can also be customized to cater to our customers' needs yeah, as required. Yeah. yeah, and you know, in this industry, we always talk about sustainability. It's the buzzword, um, sustainability yeah. at farm level, sustainability at processing level, um, sustainability at retail and distribution level, etc. How does CHIP uh, uh, ensure their own sustainability levels within the agricultural sector? And what impact have you guys made for the number of years that you've been operating within South Africa? Um, what impact have you made in the sector around sustainability? Yeah, no, absolutely. Sustainability is definitely a buzzword at the moment. <laughs> and CHIP's business model, which is a, a circular reuse model that I've mentioned, is inherently sustainable. Our large yeah. network involving 7 million pallets, 4 million crates, and about 500,000 bins available at 85 service centers across Sub-Saharan Africa mm. makes a just-in-time system possible for optimal efficiency and the precise number of platforms required, as and when they are required. You know, I mean, using JIP, uh, uh, platforms means that our customers do not have to outlay capital to move their products. You know, pallets and containers yeah. are rented uh, from us and mm. returned to us. Uh, we then wash them, recondition the platforms, and they are ready to be sent back into the supply chain again. This proves operationally feasible to many customers as they do not have to keep uh, equipment which frees up, uh, you know, the space in their pack houses as well. Yeah. Mm. Wow, Gerard, you know, yeah, you, you definitely sound like an expert in your industry and uh, you've got quite a vast knowledge um, around the agricultural industry and fresh produce. And I think it speaks to the, the work that CHEP has done uh, uh, throughout South Africa, especially in our agri-space. Um, one last question, uh, Gerard, that I just want to find out, you know, uh, there's a lot of concerns regards to high prices, um, uh, around fuel fertilizers, you know, farming is becoming more and more expensive. How, how, wh what's the discussions that you are having with a number of stakeholders that you interact with on a daily basis? Because I can only presume the more farmers grow, the more the need to have a business like CHIP, you know? Um, so what is, your, what is your view on the South African outlook around agriculture? Are we gonna be growing in the next couple of years uh, to justify CHIP's existence? Or are you guys also just becoming concerned maybe with maybe a lot of imports that we're having now, um, less farmers producing? Um, what, 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 what in your case or in your view do you see the outlook looking like for the next couple yeah. of years? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think I think we are all concerned, Mbali. I mean, mm. but I must be honest, the agriculture space is is so exciting. You know, if you just go out and you drive around and you just see the amount of trees that our growers are planting every day, every year, it's unbelievable. So for me, that's very exciting. So I personally see a fantastic future for agriculture. And we as CHEP like to grow with the, with the farmers out there. You know, that's why we've made sure every year we spend uh, an enormous uh, kind of money, you know, uh, um, in order to make sure that uh, all those on plants and trees that they plant out there, uh, that we have the equipment available to our growers and, and customers out there to actually move them throughout the supply chain. I mean, I think we've proved over the years that in South Africa, we will uh, overcome everything. And uh, we are concerned about the pricing. I mean, Chip will be there. We will try and make sure to um, absorb uh, most of the cost that, uh, you know, we do get. But in order to make sure that we have the equipment ready for our customers, um, whenever they, they need them. Yeah, I must agree with that comment that, we, you know, we are South Africans, we overcome everything, we are a resilient nation. <laughs> so it's, it's quite positive to hear you being positive as well about the industry. But thank you so much, Gerard, for your time this evening. I thoroughly enjoyed our conversation and how you unpacked very uh, difficult uh, terminologies and jargon, which sometimes we don't ask ourselves, what exactly does that mean? Or how can I become sustainable? How can I ensure that my business 
business exists tomorrow over and above all these challenges that we're faced with. But uh, I think you were able to unpack that quite uh, um, simply for us to understand. And um, yeah, all the best with, with your business, Chip. And um, let's hope more farmers can keep you know, growing so that we could obviously uh, have Chip in our operations. But thank you for your time this evening. Thanks a lot, Mbari. It was really a pleasure and it was nice, nice meeting you. Thanks. It's a pleasure. That was Gerard Stander, di director of CHIP South Africa, and we were speaking about trends in agriculture. We spoke about AI, artificial intelligence, technology, e-commerce, uh, supply chains and logistics, and how the organization CHIP as a company um, goes above and beyond just assisting other companies with their logistics and supply chain um, over and above the product that they're selling within the industry. And I think it was such a nice uh, note to close off this conversation this evening where he expressed his positive outlook in terms of what he sees on the ground uh, in the agri-industry, farmers planting more trees, um, you know, over and above the challenges that we're currently facing as farmers. And so I hope you enjoyed our chat this evening. And if you missed it, please go onto our YouTube channel. That's where you could catch um, this conversation. And uh, keep supporting the Farming Podcast. And I'll see you next week with another interesting episode. Take care.